Hello everyone, welcome to the video class on Diabetes mellitus treatment. In this video, I am going to explain about insulin and its uh, functions, insulin preparations to treat diabetes mellitus, oral hypoglycemics and parenteral hypoglycemics. This is my channel wherein you find pharma, medicine and physiotherapy related videos. If you like the video, subscribe the video. Let's get into the topic. Now, insulin is a peptide hormone which is secreted from pancreatic beta cells. Now, when it is released, it is released as pre-pro-insulin which is converted to pro-insulin which is converted to insulin and C-peptide. C-peptide is important because when insulin is released, its half-life is only 4 to 6 minutes. So, if you want to know how much insulin is released, it is very difficult because of its short, short half-life. Whereas C-peptide will be there for 30 to 35 minutes. So, this one, it is easy to measure C-peptide which will tell you how much amount of insulin is released. The reason is both of them are released from pro-insulin in equimolar amounts. Now, when you see the insulin, insulin has got two chains, A chain and a B chain. A chain has got 21 amino acids whereas B chain has got 30 amino acids. They are bound with disulfide bonds. So this is how it looks. You can see A chain and a B chain. This one has got 21 amino acid, this one has got 30 amino acid and it has got two disulfide bonds. Moving further. Now insulin released. Insulin release is, is due to whenever we take food, from the food when glucose is released, from the blood the glucose reaches to pancreatic gland. In the pancreatic gland when glucose gets into the cell, it synthesizes ATP. That ATP inhibits a potassium channel. When the potassium channel is inhibited, it results in membrane depolarization which activates calcium channel. The influx of calcium is what releases insulin. This is what, this is how insulin is released. So the major stimuli to release insulin is glucose. Now once insulin is released, insulin is a kind of anabolic hormone. Anabolic hormone means which makes up bigger molecules. Now what happens with when, whenever insulin is released? The glucose is uptaken into the cell and the glucose is converted into excess glucose is converted into glycogen. Along with that free fatty acids are converted into lipids. You can see the monomers or small molecules are getting converted into polymers or bigger molecules hence it is known as anabolic hormone. This is what is the function and release of insulin is. Next, now antihyperglycemic agents. So there is a big list but let us try to break it down and make it simplified simplify the things. Now you have oral antidiabetics and parenteral drugs are there. In parenteral insulin is the major course of treatment. Now the other two classes are there. I will explain it later but let us see the oral classes too. Oral classes there are agents which will cause the release of insulin. They are known as insulin secretogogues, sulfonylurea megalitinates. Both of them they whenever they are taken they increase the release of insulin. Now the other drugs which are acting in other mechanisms, you have bigonides, thiazolidine dione, alpha glucosidase inhibitors, D2 agonist, dipeptyl peptidase 4 inhibitors and sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors. We will see one by one. Now let us see about insulin preparations. Now when you see insulin preparations, they are classified according to their duration of action. You have rapid acting, short acting, intermediate acting and long acting are there. See, the first two classes, rapid and short acting, you have similar kind of duration of action is there, 3 to 4 hours or 5 to 8 hours. Now, let us see about the short acting regular insulin. See, regular insulin is the one which we have seen just now. It is synthesized with the use of biotechnology. A insulin synthesizing gene is inserted into Escherichia coli bacteria and the bacteria starts synthesizing insulin. Now, what happens with this insulin is, this insulin, whenever it is given, it forms he hexamers. Six of the insulin molecules will combine together and form a kind of hexamer. And because of this formation, the release or onset is very low because it will release it slowly and it takes at least 30 to 60 minutes to show its action, but the duration will be 5 to 8 hours. To, to, to get a better onset of action, certain modifications are carried out on this insulin. They are called as lisplo as, as part glulisine. See, these modifications are based with insulin. Let us see the modification. See, these are all the two chains of insulin, A chain, B chain, 21 amino acids and 30 amino acids. Now, let us see this insulin Lispro. The reason why it is called as Lispro is lysine proline. In 
in native insulin at the beach end at 28 position you have proline at 29 position you have lysine is there in lispro they are altered in 28th they got a lysine in 29th they have they have got a proline what is the advantage of all of them all of them will form monomers i told you the regular insulin the problem is it forms a hexamer six of the molecules will combine and the onset of action is delayed in this case they remain as such monomers and the onset of action is very rapid look at this 15 to 20 minutes they will start acting it now the other one insulin glue lysine look at this glue glutamic acid and the lysine only these two amino acids are changed at 29th position instead of lysine you have glutamic acid is there the third position instead of aspartic acid lysine is there that's why it is known as glue lysine similarly aspart only one change at 28th position instead of proline aspartic acid is there so all of them the advantage is monomers and onset is very rapid within 15 minutes but understand this one whenever people are taking this kind of insulins within 15 to 20 minutes insulin starts acting and they need to take food within 15 to 20 minutes otherwise all the glucose will be taken back into the cells and that results in hypoglycemia remember this thing now coming to the other one you have intermediate acting uh, insulins are there the onset is for 2 hours but they act for 16 to 20 hours these are a kind of suspensions nph means neutral protamin hacked on what happens is insulin is converted into suspension with the help of zinc and a phosphate buffer is added to it and it gives a kind of suspension and because of that onset is delayed and the duration of action is also delayed long acting you have glargain detimer deglutac you can see these modifications see detimer glargain and deglutac see glargain these are all the modifications whereas detimer you can see meristoyl group is attached that means you are attaching a free fatty acid the deglutac you have same thing hexa decano diol alpha glutamic acid is attached when you attach such kind of free fatty acid the duration of action is increased look at look at these things they act for 1 to 2 days the duration of action is very high so once in a day dose is enough for such kind of long acting insulin so this is about insulin but there is a problem with all the insulin all the insulins what do they do when they get into the body they immediately reduce glucose levels that will cause hypoglycemia hypoglycemia means reduced levels of glucose in the blood this is dangerous condition if it is there for sustained period of time it it may it may cause mental confusion sometimes it may leads to coma also so if prolonged hypoglycemia is there dextrose has to be given in the in the form of a liquid or you can give adrenaline or glucagon has to be given in the homes we don't have all these things so dextrose or glucose powder is the best thing or they can carry chocolates too but understand i told you already these three the onset of action is very rapid so within 15 to 20 minutes food has to be taken now the major problem is hypoglycemia second one weight gain why people gain weight because glucose is getting into the cells the blood will have hypoglycemic effect and they'll start taking too much of food that is what results in weight gain so these are all the problems with insulin preparations now oral hypoglycemics you have a lot of classes are there the first two classes are known as insulin secretogogues sulfonylureas and maglutinates in sulfonylureas you have two generations are there tolbutamide first generation glipizide glibenclamide all of them are second generation maglutinates you have repaglutinate and nataglutinate are there now both of them the action is very similar they increase insulin release how see we have seen already how uh, insulin releases now this potassium channel inhibition is what is causing release of insulin the same channel has got a receptor called as sulfonylurea receptor and to this receptor the sulfonylureas and maglutinates both of them will bind inhibit the channel cause the same things and cause release of insulin hence they are known as insulin secretogogues they are releasing insulin they are acting on pancreatic beta cell the problem same things look at them hypoglycemia weight gain whatever the side effects you see with insulin the same effects will be there with these two drugs now the next two drugs are known as insulin sensitizers that means they will make the cells more sensitive towards insulin how they will cause an effect called as they will reduce hepatic glucose production is reduced that means from the liver glucose production is reduced and that causes cells to be to become sensitive towards insulin 
hence they are known as insulin sensitizers especially thiazolidin thion it will be acting on a receptor known as peroxisome proliferating activating receptor gamma now the job of this receptor is that will reduce the circulating free fatty acids and increases sensitivity towards insulin that is the reason why both of them are known as insulin sensitizers now the next one alpha glucosidase this is an enzyme which is present in the intestine and it results in the release of glucose if this enzyme is inhibited what happens the action is at gi tract and the enzyme is inhibited the enzyme is inhibited glucose formation is reduced if glucose formation is reduced hyperglycemia will not be there this is how they will act and the drug is acarbose and megalitol now the next one dibacterial peptidase has got a different mechanism of action I, i will explain it in the next slide now see there is something called as incretin effect see look at them whenever we take food the food gets into the intestine and in the intestine the release of glucose causes release of certain hormones known as glucagon like peptide and glucose dependent insulinotropic peptide excuse me. so this gip means glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide both of them are known as incretins what is, what is their job the incretins will go activate pancreas beta cells and increases insulin release at the same time they also reduces glucagon release so this effect is known as incretin in fact imagine you have taken orally 5 5 mg of glucose and 5 mg of glucose is given through intravenously see the the dose or amount is same 5 mg but when it is taken through the oral cavity the release of insulin is high whereas when it is taken through intravenously the release of insulin is not that much that effect is known as incretin effect why is this effect when you take through oral cavity these hormones are getting released which will increases the release of insulin if you take in iv form the hormones will not get released so insulin release is not that much that is what is known as incretin effect so oral glucose always increases the level of insulin release now these incretins are metabolized by dipeptidyl peptidase enzyme if this enzyme is inhibited what happens you are increasing incretin levels if the levels are increased insulin release is increased the example for the class of drugs are gliptins sitagliptin saxagliptin alogliptin all of them uh, related to this class now one more thing is there glp analogs are there so they are similar to this peptide they are known as exenatide they they are taken intravenously they are not oral drugs but still they have similar incretin effect increase insulin release so these two classes are also considered as insulin secretogogs along with that sulfonylureas and megalitonides these two are also insulin secretogogs look at them see the incretin is glp what it does it increases insulin release reduces glucagon release the effect is when insulin more amount is there blood glucose reduces that means you are treating hyperglycemia now it is metabolized by dipeptidyl peptidase so it is inhibited by sitagliptin saxagliptin kind of drugs or analogs like exenatide can also be given so see the uh, uh, you have glp agonists are also there all these glutides there are glutide all be glutide now the last one there is something called as amylin analog amylin is released along with the insulin what it does is it reduces gi transit time and it reduces appetite so this is how it will try to control hyperglycemic effect so hyperglycemia is reduced that is why it is also considered as or this is also considered as anti hyperglycemic drug this should be taken intravenously again so these are all the drugs but along with that one more class is there it is known as sodium glucose transport inhibitors now understand this one Uh, this happens in the nephron in the nephron from the tubule if glucose is there glucose is reabsorbed with the help of a transporter known as sodium glucose transporter the job is along with sodium it will uh, uh, the glucose will get reabsorbed if this transporter is inhibited what happens if you inhibit this transporter glucose goes out of the body so what is happening essentially you are reducing the levels of glucose that is nothing but you are treating hyperglycemia the excess glucose from the blood will be going out of the blood and that is how these drugs will act the class the drugs are dapagliflozin kenagliflozin so again this is what is the overall drug classification is take a, a, a screenshot of this slide so that you will remember everything easily thank you for watching these are my 
channel credentials if you like the video do subscribe